In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. So let us pray. Oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is taken from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 21 through 25. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord.
This morning, the Holy Gospel, according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Follow along with me in Ezekiel chapter 34 as I bring to you both bad news and good news. Which would you like first? You'll notice that in every Lutheran sermon and in every good biblical Christian sermon, There's both what we might think of as bad news and good news. Bad news is the law and where we have fallen short. And the good news is not what we do, but the good news is really what God does and what he's done for us specifically in Jesus Christ and continues to do for us today. We emphasize, we highlight, we hang our hats, honestly, on the good news or the gospel. Is that bright and shining word from God, but it's not clearly seen or seen the way it could and should be seen without the dark background that contrasts with it of what we do. Since we never complete God's will perfectly, 
or never complete it entirely until Jesus comes back. And so in Ezekiel chapter 34, quite frankly, we're given a slice and most of the bad news has already been sliced out. The bad news is the first portion of this reading. The, the bad news is the condition of the way the world is right now and the difficulties that we're going through. The bad news is the condition of the sheep without a good shepherd, the one who really cares for the sheep. Now, you'd say that's the, that sounds like the gospel reading we had in John chapter 10 today. However, you have to go back and get the context before Jesus says, I am the good shepherd on this Good Shepherd Sunday. We need to go back to the context of what Yahweh, God in the Old Testament, said when in the first 10 verses of Ezekiel chapter 34, before we get to our reading in chapter 11, when the word of the Lord Yahweh came to Ezekiel, and in verse 2, he says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, the most direct application of that today would be to pastors, <laughs> to pastors of churches, of Bible churches. Thus says the Lord God, all the shepherds of Israel who've been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? The problem then, and I hate to say it, folks, still today is shepherds who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> shepherds who are not faithfully speaking the truth. Shepherds who are giving people what they like to give or in their own reason or strength rather than confessing that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ or come to him, or be a good shepherd. Without him, no human being has any help that will get you out of your desperate, eternal condition. And so to see a beautiful gem like a diamond properly, both lighting is helpful, but the backdrop is often, if you've seen this, not that I handle diamonds very often, but I see it in the movies. A dark felt or background so that when the light hits the diamond, you see how the light moves through it and it illumines and all the reflections in its glory and beauty. To understand the gospel, you have to understand first the condition we're in without the good shepherd. And we're born that way. We're born into it. We're born into all kinds of problems where folks think that they can figure out their way through the world on their own. And in a Bible study this morning, we also kind of poured over the problems when in our free world, without a kind of the top-down control of one church. We have the freedom to speak whatever we'd like. And so if you have a computer with an internet access, you can put up your own website, publish your own materials. You can say anything you want to say. We do have freedom of speech, and that's a good thing. However, in the church... It's problematic because there are dozens or hundreds or thousands or millions of false teachers, false prophets, shepherds think, who think they're leading other people but are just spewing out their own imagination or desires or whims or preferences rather than what comes from above the only one that understands our need. And so, thankfully, this is a sermon for the pastor, but this is also a message for all of you to be free as well. Listen to what God does in this problematic situation that Israel is in. 
When I'm reading in verse 11, for thus says the Lord God, behold, I, I, I am going to do the work that's needed. This is beautifully translated in our ESV where they say, I, comma, I, myself. It's emphatic and it's exclusive. It says that only Yahweh, the one true God, is your shepherd, is the one that knows what you need, that gives you what your soul needs most eternally and for today. Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he's among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep. The bad news is that it's not about you. The good news is it's not about you. It's about him because he never fails. He never misses. He always speaks the truth. So why are our hearts inclined to go somewhere else, to find another voice, to seek after what our appetites of our old sin nature like or what sounds good or what's popular? So you can't necessarily just say the best church is the largest one. I believe the largest church in the world is still in Seoul, Korea. Over half of a million people. So they can't gather in one place at one time, but in small groups and in different sizes all over Seoul, Korea, over half a million members. Neither in America can you find the most faithful one and hear necessarily the voice of the only good shepherd just by the numbers by the how how large the crowd is but thankfully there's one who intervenes in our problematic world and says that i i myself yahweh will seek out my sheep and i will rescue them in all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I I myself will feed them I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country I will feed them with good pasture now on the Mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land, and they there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. As if that's not enough, it concludes with the same in verses 15 and 16. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down. Or as the King James translation of Psalm 23 so lovely presents, I maketh them to lie down in green pastures. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and those who think they're strong themselves, I would add in here, those who are strong or think they're strong in their own strength or other things they have, their money, their good looks, those I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. That's the bad news. The good news is that Yahweh is doing this. So isn't it, wouldn't it be shocking for, for this guy, Jesus of Nazareth now, to stand up and say, I am the good shepherd. How does God play this out? He does by coming. He goes by sending. The Father sends the Son. The Son incarnate 
born of the Virgin Mary. This is the one who says, I am the good shepherd. I myself am. And for this, they wanted to kill him. And so the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so today, thankfully, God makes this promise that I will build my church in Matthew 16. So faithfully, God is still at work. Where his word is taught and preached faithfully and his sacraments administered rightly, there the Holy Spirit is still at work. Even in churches that I think are iffy, we even call them cults, even there, if they have an, a translation of the Bible they can read, the Holy Spirit, there's potential there for them to hear what it says and hear the voice of the one true shepherd rather than kind of the clamoring voices or misled voices um, that, that may be official or may be in the pulpit in that congregation. Thankfully, God's bigger than that, bigger than me and bigger than you. It's not about us. God himself, and now incarnate in flesh, Christ Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd. This is the king that they needed before they had Saul and David and Solomon. This is the king that the world needs. And your political ambitions and suggestions of any kind will not replace this one who is the good shepherd. He needs to be our king, and we absolutely need him. He's the only one that will give us what our soul needs, and he does. Thankfully, when your pastor, um, you know, if your pastor comes up short, if he misses it, you have been given God's word translated, and we have the Lutheran confessions faithfully expressing what the scriptures say, to keep your pastor on point, to keep each other on point, so you don't start believing that you're the answer. But Christ, and Christ alone, grace alone, through faith alone, and His Word alone. Does that sound familiar? It should. Guy named, uh, what's his name? Luther. Oh, yeah. Back in the 16th century, he stumbled across this, and thankfully he had Johann Bugenhagen was his pastor and directed him back to the scriptures. So if the church is going off course, the voice of the Lord is still here. And he fell off his chair and his life was transformed, which is the exact same thing that happens to have, has to happen to all of us when we understand it's all about him. I will, so, so think about your grandchildren and your friends and family and neighbors that you're worried about. Call on the name of the Good Shepherd. It's in baptismal grace. It's in His gospel and His word. He says, I will gather them. The ones that are injured, I will heal them. I will bind them up. God is doing it. I don't care who your pastor is. Without the word of God, it's not God doing it. God has to do this. And he does. He's faithful with his word and sacraments. Come close to him and listen and hear him. Day by day and week by week, there the good shepherd leads us and he feeds us. Even from his table, his very body and blood, this eternal food. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. You are free. You are safe. You're taken care of, no matter what's going on out there. In the name of Jesus, our, our risen, crucified, but risen, Lord and Savior and Shepherd. Amen. So now this peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.